Okay, five minutes of previously approved uh, special order time. Without objection, the gentlewoman is recognized for five minutes. Mr. Speaker, I ask for unanimous consent to revise and extend my remarks. Uh, Mr. Speaker, so ordered. American citizens should beware. Driving in Mexico potentially has serious problems for Americans, particularly if you are involved in an automobile accident. A lawyer from Maryland, Lawrence Pipino Jr., learned that the hard way by being a good citizen and staying at the scene of an accident, as Americans do, but that doesn't pay in Mexico. For his efforts, he was jailed and his human rights were seriously violated. Mr. Pino relates that he was in Cancun, Mexico on his way one afternoon for, to scuba dive when a young man on a moped ran into the side of his rented budget rental car Volkswagen. The car was stopped when the moped, driven by a Mexican national, slammed into the side of the Volkswagen. The moped rider came off a walkway into the road, hitting the car. The Mexican citizen was injured, so Mr. Pino stayed at the scene, giving him aid. Mr. Pino says that he cooperated fully with the police officials who arrived on the scene, which began what he later describes as a nightmare. The description of what happened next set the stage for buying his way out of jail. Yes, I said buying his way out of jail. Mr. Pino related that a uniformed person arrived at the scene and drew a di diagram. He did not talk to any witnesses, although there were many. Then he directed me, this again is Mr. Pino talking, to drive my rented motor vehicle to a place which I believe was the transit police headquarters. I did so. Upon my arrival there, I was placed in a small room. Nobody said anything to me other than that I was to be detained. No traffic tickets were written, no charges were filed, and there was no judicial officer present or promise for the future. I was merely to be detained, unquote. From the time of his detention, officials requested money from him for each step of the system before he was finally released. He had to pay 20 pesos to a person who was to administer a breathalyzer test. There was a subtle threat to Mr. Pino that if he did not submit to the test, his detention would continue. Of course the test was negative because there was no alcohol in his blood. The breathalyzer operator next investigated the moped passenger's injuries. At that time, Mr. Pino was told that with a payment of an additional 20 pesos nuoves, he could leave. He paid the money, but he was still detained. At five o'clock, he was transported in a locked police vehicle to another small building where supposedly Mr. Pino could see a judge. A sign indicated that this was the Policia Judicial del Estado Comandancia, 94. There was no judge. Mr. Pino was not allowed to leave, but he was subjected to further processing. At 11 o'clock, he was required to sign a document written in Spanish and was told that he could leave after paying $1,000 in cash. Having only $600, Mr. Pino offered his jailers a credit card with his passport as security. Only cash was acceptable. By now he had been in custody some 10 hours without food, water, or bathroom facilities. Desperate, Mr. Pino asked to use a telephone to call American Express for funds so he could leave. But there were no phones. Later, he was told by someone in charge that if Mr. Pino would sign an American Express sales draft in blank, then he could leave. Hopeful, he signed the draft, but was not permitted to leave. When Mr. Pino's captors realized that he would not produce the cash, he was put in a jail cell along with 19 other prisoners. The cell was 12 feet by 16 feet wide and was so small and crowded that not everyone could sit at the same time. There was no food or bathroom facilities. Prisoners relieved themselves on the floor, which was the only place to sit. By 1.30 the next day, a friend furnished $1,000 in cash, but it took another four hours before he was finally released.
Mr. Pino is so upset over this experience that he's considering running ads in newspapers to find out how many other Americans have had similar experiences. For my part, I intend to write to Secretary of State requesting that warnings be provided American citizens about driving in Mexico. At least our government should warn Americans that they are at risk driving in Mexico. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield back the balance of my time. Under the Speaker's announced policy of February 11th,